Hey, welcome back everybody. As we promised when we revealed our 599 project, uh, we are going to dyno test this thing in its factory form. So nothing has been done to the car performance wise yet. Uh, so we have this big, awesome, naturally aspirated V12 from Ferrari. Uh, we're gonna load this thing up on the dyno. Jesse's just finishing up that now. Uh, we're gonna prep the dyno cell here and we're gonna give this thing a couple quick runs and see what kind of power it makes. Uh, worth noting, that some media outlets have reported that the zero to 60 on this car was actually better than advertised from Ferrari. So it'll be interesting to know uh, where the wheel horsepower lands uh, compared to their, their estimated power. So we'll check that out right now. So like we talked about in our reveal video, uh, we want to tune the exhaust. To be perfectly honest with you, this V12, while it is an NA V12, doesn't sound very good with the factory exhaust. We want it to wail like a banshee when it all is said and done. So a big part of this dyno test is to record it from different angles, uh, kind of see what we're working with, and then we can tune it from there to sound much, much better than it already does. So I know what you're thinking, how can a V12 not sound amazing? And it sounds okay, uh, but the GTO version of this car actually has six into one headers from the factory. So the headers we've got for the car are six into one. And it's not just about making the highest volume or the highest pitch possible. We really want this car to sound unique and special in the way Kels does. Uh, so we want to follow that formula with something with twice as many cylinders and hopefully we can make the sound really good when all is said and done. Okay, so we did our first pull here and it made 516 horsepower and the dynograph is hideous. I mean, it's so bumpy and gross looking. Um, so we'll do another couple pulls and see if it smooths out, but uh, definitely encouraging that once we put a MoTeC in here, we should be able to improve what's probably just a really overactive knock control system and, and bad fueling or I, I don't know what, but crazy. Dude, I thought that was like a dyno issue. Is that actually... I think that's actually what it looks like, yeah. That's wild, man. I've literally never seen that. Okay, so the second pull, it uh, gained some torque. I don't know if it's learning. We did a battery reset not too long ago, so it's most likely learning every pull. Um, after the last battery reset, it was very rich at idle and had trouble even idling. So I'm guessing the, uh, the ECU reset base tune to what it learns is very different, uh, but it still looks to be around 518 horsepower. Um, so we'll do one last pull here and we'll see, but that's a pretty decent baseline. Um, yeah.
want to explain what's, uh, what's going on here? Yeah, so it's a very lumpy graph, three big um, humps, one at 4,700, 6,500, and 8,000. And hopefully when we tune it with a MoTeC, we'll be able to smooth some of that out and recover some of the power in those dips. Um, and with a freer flowing exhaust, hopefully we can also find some more power. So yeah, it's not overly impressive, but it's consistent and the engine sounds healthy, so that's good. All right, so we put this thing on the dyno. Uh, got some interesting results. Um, judging by the graph, you guys have seen it as well. Uh, it runs a little strangely from the factory. This is pretty typical for OEM cars. It's probably, you know, uh, right up against a knock sensor or just tuned very conservatively. Uh, and it's not the smoothest delivery of the power, so we can fix that with a little MoTeC, but this is pretty typical, kind of what we expected from an NAV12 um, OEM tuned, if you will. Uh, interestingly, uh, compared to some of the cars we've had on the dyno recently, we're all kind of sitting around the same power level. You have Kels, uh, in NA form without any electrical boost is just about the same, just over 500. Uh, and the Model 3. Also just over 500 uh, around on the wheels. So it was really cool to see that our three project cars here are, are all right in the same power level. Of course, Kells, once you add hybrid power, is much more. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see what happens with this kind of doing the same. Uh, it's cool to see that the power per cylinder from Kels is about double. Obviously, this is a factory car and Kels uses a race engine, so there's some stark differences there. But as we make changes to the 599, it'll be really cool to see how that power becomes more unlocked and, and more smoothly delivered as well. So we'll follow up with future dyno sessions and, and see how we can kind of tune this thing to, to what we're looking for. So it's worth noting something we mentioned, the exhaust note. Uh, we weren't super impressed. It sounds a little bit better at wide open, obviously, but it's still just not very good. It doesn't sound like that signature V12, angry, raspy, without being too obnoxious note. So I think that's something we can work towards. Uh, we have a really good baseline for what it's gonna sound like. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what this will turn into over time. I'm excited to get the first few mods on. Without further ado, we're gonna get started on that and we'll fill you guys in on the next one. Good. Woo! Rev so fast with the Votech.